The Reedy Set Grow Podcast with Trish Reedy. Welcome to Reedy Set Grow, the podcast that inspires you to grow into the person you're meant to be. I'm your host, Trish Reedy. I'm a local mortgage lender here in Kansas City, and I just love the people that we have here in town and the community that we've built. So I'm excited to share with you another inspirational member of the Kansas City community. My guest today is Godfrey Riddle. Hello. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. This is so fun, and I'm so glad that you're here. Love your energy. Thank you. It's awesome. Definitely picked up the room for sure. <laughs> so Godfrey, tell us a little bit about your story, how you started your business. Mm. And it, I mean, I know you've had a rough few years. Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. Um, so I think the, I'll start with what my business is and then we can kind of like back up. Okay, great. Um, so my business is called Civic Saints and we're a purposeful lifestyle company. Mm -hmm. um, we lead with the goal to create objects that inspire joy, nostalgia, and reflection. So we've launched with an inaugural collection of t-shirts, lapel pins, and signage uh -huh. that are all speaking to our cultural moment. And I'm actually wearing one I right see now. It. I see it. Persist, <laughs> it says. Yes. And I think that's core to the past two years leading up to this. And I, sure. I'd say throughout my entire adult life. So that's that. Yeah. <laughs> And how long have you been in business? So I've actually been in business um, 26 days. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're we're a newbie. We are. Fledgling. I love it. We're, we're here on the new. ground floor. Yes. Okay. First trimester. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about how this all got started. Absolutely. So if we back up a little bit, I've always wanted to own a business. Literally from the minute I was an eight-year-old boy, I remember thinking, God, I'd love to grow up and be a businessman or an entrepreneur. And um, so I've always just been drawn to that. I love mm -hmm. creativity. I love the arts. So throughout high school and middle school, I was always involved in arts clubs, mm -hmm. arts classes. I did theater in high school, um, ultimately went to KU and studied architecture with a minor in Russian language. Um, and really... Because, you know, you use Russian language with architecture all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I really love um, the Russian style of architecture. It's like Russian Baroque. It's not, that's ah. not a real term I just made up, but um, it is inspired by Baroque architecture okay. and like also um, some of the Renaissance style architecture. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go and I thought, well, if I'm going to go there, I need to speak the language. Sure. Only so, makes sense. Oh, right. Yeah. And I just assumed that they didn't speak English. Uh-huh. They speak English. Yeah, kind of everywhere, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. And the signs are in Cyrillic and English. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so maybe if I go but to you the you can read both. So that's great. It's true. <laughs> I had conversations. I'll always remember ordering um, a chocolate uh, Oh, I can't say it now. Um, a chocolate ice cream. Oh. Um, yeah, it was so cool. And we had a little conversation. I'm really bad now. Um, but I don't use it. You lose it. It's right? true. Yep. And this is over a decade ago. Yeah. Uh. Don't age yourself. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that to say, um, after undergrad, mm -hmm. I was I graduated in 2011, and it was kind of um, the tail end ish of the financial crisis. Right. I'm sure you. Know. Oh yes, we know. Yeah, so there weren't jobs, especially in architecture. If you wanted to do that, you had to go to Dubai or Southeast Asia. Yeah beautiful places, great architecture, but I did not speak the language. I didn't yeah. think they would all speak English. And I wasn't really interested in going abroad to work anyway. Sure. Um, and I realized like halfway through my degree, I don't want to be an architect. Okay. <laughs> I want to be an urban planner. Okay. Which is a That's whole, related. It is. Yeah. It is. But it's like the last, mm, you know, year or two of your classes a little bit different. Yeah. I should have taken those classes. Well, okay. <laughs> so ultimately, I um, decided to do a year of service as an AmeriCorps VISTA oh, member. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love Are it. you That's, familiar? I'm so familiar. It's something that I always thought would have been cool. I've never done it, but. It's never too late. They yeah. have adult AmeriCorps yeah. members. Yeah. And they have senior AmeriCorps That's members. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll add that to the bucket list. I know. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Jot it down. Yeah. Jot it down. <laughs> <laughs> so you did a, you did AmeriCorps. Yeah. And I wanted, I grew up in Olathe. I've lived in Kansas my whole life. Life, and mm -hmm. I wanted to go somewhere warm because I detest winter yep. at the time. So I, I looked at Seattle because I was like, winter there aren't that bad. Mm -hmm. And then I looked in the Sun Belt and ultimately mm -hmm. I landed in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh -huh. um, they are actually one of the sunniest places yeah. on the planet. I think 350 days of sunshine. Yeah. 
Half of our company is in Phoenix. So when I talk to them, they're like, oh, it's only 90 today. I'm like, it's the middle of winter. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a beautiful 90. Their yeah. 90 is like our 75. Right? It's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, winter, you're in shorts and a t-shirt and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. But I worked at the city of Phoenix in mm -hmm. the neighborhood services department doing volunteer management to help with code abatements for low income residents, oh, wow. elderly residents uh -huh. who just didn't have the means physically or financially sure yeah and that way they avoid fines as mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. then the potential of jail time which just drops you off a cliff right um and then i also worked in the city manager's volunteer office helping mm -hmm. with citywide volunteer initiatives very cool um, so we implemented a volunteer management system other protocols and procedures for tracking volunteers and um, so you were a professional yeah. volunteer yeah. And then how do we, how do we get to be a businessman? Oh my God. Sorry. I died, I died too deep in that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So as part of my work in the city manager's office, I wrote a grant for, um, uh, cities of service to start two programs, a community gardening initiative mm -hmm. at city owned facilities, and then, um, a sustainability initiative to make our buildings, you know, more, more sustainable. sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh my God, you write words on paper and then people give you money love that right so i was like that's a career fundraising's a thing oh it's a thing yeah that's how i started out oh in my fundraising God. and really? development mm -hmm. oh i could tell you've got the personality uh, thank you yeah yep. yeah you're, very good at, <laughs> <laughs> you're bubbly and you're good at asking questions yeah. which is i think core to being successful for sure for sure um so ultimately i came back to kansas to get my master's i interned at arts kc regional arts council and mm -hmm. fundraising so i could like understand what it really meant right fell in love with it and then um through that i just started down that career tra trajectory mm -hmm. And then um, I was exposed to a lot. So exposed to all of the creativity that our grant recipients were implementing through their mm -hmm. work. Um, I, as a consumer of the arts at the Arts Council, you have to go to see what you're supporting so sure. you can talk about it. Yeah. So I did that a lot. And then ultimately, um, I met a friend named Jennifer Lapka, who founded Rightfully Sewn, which uh -huh. is um, a fashion-based nonprofit that I love, got involved helping her build that company up into what it is today. And I intentionally did that because I knew I wanted to start a business. I knew I wanted it to potentially be a social enterprise or nonprofit mm -hmm. and rightfully mm -hmm. so and is a social enterprise. Right. Um, so I was like, this is a good testing ground. Right. And I, I love fashion. I love women's empowerment. It makes sense. Um, and then through that, I gained a lot of the skills that well, I got to use a lot of the skills I developed and gain some skills I needed to build my own business. Um, but then ultimately in June of 2018, I received a cancer diagnosis. Oh, for, wow. Yeah. A little ridiculous. Um, and then my father passed away shortly after that. And then my aunt right before that, my favorite aunt. Mm. Um, and then my mother passed away a year oh later. My gosh. Yeah. And I was going, and then that's um, literally the day that we had her service. I went to my ENT and they're like, our first surgery didn't. It, it removed the, the tumor, but there's now a, a huge tumor back and we're going to have to remove your jaw. And I was oh like, my gosh, what? you're, you're going to what? Yeah. So, um, they basically took my jaw from like the center all the way up to the ear on the left side and then rebuilt it. Wow. Um, and then I did chemo and radiation, but all of that loss. Um, oh my gosh. Doing all of that <laughs> Yeah. while losing probably the most important people in your life, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My mother was my best, my very first best friend and one of, um, like my board of directors yeah. basically. Yep. We so, all need those. Absolutely. It's like her and then, um, two other good friends. And so it, it's just been hard to navigate all of that loss, all oh of my gosh. that pain and, and the fear of dying. Absolutely. A very, yeah. Um, because typically, if you don't catch the type of cancer I had, um, it will just grow into your brain stem and kill you. So, wow. but that takes a while. Um, okay, I was good. not that far along. Good. Um, thankfully. But it was still a, radi a radical surgery that really altered my self concept. And yeah. it's like I've lost my parents. Uh, like everything did, in my do life. Do you feel is like different. you look different? 
Um, a little. Yeah, I wow. have a scar, and then there, it's not as symmetrical, but... Wow. Um, and then I don't have teeth yet because they're like, we can't give you dentures until you're done healing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So when was your surgery? It was um, November 16th of 2019. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And then um, chemo was... December 23rd, which was my mother's birthday. Oh. Yeah, so I took it as a sign that I was starting chemo on her birthday as a sign that it would all be okay. Mm -hmm. And then I ended in early February um, chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. But I'm in remission. Like, Yay! everything's gone. Nothing's come back. It's, yeah. That's so awesome. We're good. That's awesome. But um, I, I tell you all of that because it really put me in a place of questioning what I want to do with my life and reminding I me. I can only imagine. Right? Yeah. Woo. And, like, understanding what's important. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't believe that I'd always been guided by, like, I have this singular purpose that I must pursue in my life, and I will let nothing get in the way of it, mm -hmm. and work is of the utmost importance. And that experience showed me that it work is not of the utmost importance. It's about creating space to build meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. And when I lost my father, I distinctly remember thinking, do not close off, lean into your close relationships. This is why you mm. have these friends. Yeah. Um, and it, it's been pivotal in me being able to persevere through all of that um, and everything that came after. But all that to say that it really opened up again my desire to own a business mm -hmm. and start a company because I also want to have financial freedom to sure. live the life I want to live. And I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm working on like it's yeah. only a month in, but we're right. doing okay. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought, and then with all of the unrest that happened over the summer following George Floyd's murder, mm -hmm. um, understanding that I wanted to do something that would make a difference, I came up with an idea for like affirmational phrases that mm -hmm. are on shirts and mm -hmm. on pins. Um, and I tried to keep them apolitical. I really just wanted to focus on fortifying the human spirit and really mm -hmm. affirming our identity, regardless of your political leaning. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I believe that we are all of equal importance and all deserve equal space in society. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care what you believe. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all people. Um, so, yeah, so I just, like, registered the business on June 26, enrolled in Elevation um, uh -huh. Lab New Venture, and then launched the business on October 10th. And um, I would not advise going that quickly. <laughs> it's very stressful. I imagine. Um, yeah. I imagine. Well, clearly you handle stress well. I do. I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah, so that that was what really spurred me to launch this business. Mm -hmm. And um, because it's a social enterprise, we donate a portion of each product sold to organizations that fight for racial and social equity. Mm -hmm. um, hence the name Civic Saint, because it's a play off of that, the virtue yeah. of a saint, but also the focus on community with the mm -hmm. civic aspect mm -hmm. of it. Um, and I really do want to grow it beyond apparel um, to include home decor, artwork, yeah. culinary items, and all uplifting people of color and women entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, who have those products and collaborating with them to develop new products. Yeah. So that's my very long-winded story. I love it. I see something RBG in your future. Oh, my God. Right? It could I mean, be. And, yeah. and really, what a year to try to be apolitical. 2020, I mean, whew. I know. <laughs> Maybe not a good time. Yeah. <laughs> man, man. Ooh. So what do you think really allowed you to persist through all that? Mm. I mean, how that's a lot for for anyone to handle. But I mean, essentially by yourself. I mean, obviously, you had your friends and those that you really leaned into. But how did you do it? Oh, my God. I'm still unpacking that. Um, I really do think it again, those close relationships, leaning into them mm -hmm. helped quite a lot because you can't 
persist or persevere through anything like that alone. Yeah. Um, so really knowing your limits too. Um, I done a, I done a lot of therapy leading up to this. So mm-hmm. thank God for therapy. Right. Um, in, in 2016, I actually made a commitment because it was the first time I'd had like health care because mm-hmm. um, I just graduated from my master's. And I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, we get insurance. medical insurance, Ooh. right? Yeah, benefits. <laughs> hey. yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this my year of mental health. So I scheduled so an appointment with, a th- I researched and then scheduled my appointment in March and mm-hmm. started therapy. And I did that up until about, um, I'd say, I'd say probably January of 2018, just working on myself, um, developing coping mechanisms, really yeah. learning how to dive deep into who I am. And that sounds really proactive. Like none of the, none of your big things had really happened yet, right? Oh God, no. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. and horribly, the impetus was like, I want to be prepared to like find the love of my life. I'm still waiting for him. If you're out there. <laughs> we'll share contact info later. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was really it. I wanted to find, be prepared to find the love of my life. That's but cool. ultimately it's really about being prepared to love yourself uh-huh. sort of thing. Um, yeah, you got to have a good relationship with yourself absolutely. if you want to have a relationship with anyone else. Absolutely. It's the most important relationship in your entire life. Mm-hmm. So that really helped me out quite a bit. And then I'm naturally an optimistic person. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think leaning into that optimism and also through therapy, understanding that you can control your narrative. Um, I listened mm-hmm. and I listened to a lot of NPR but I listen. You don't to- have to say it with that kind of face. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say it with that kind of derision because my friends make fun of me for it because they're like, it's been 10 minutes and you haven't mentioned NPR. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm sure I'll get a few more drops in here before. We- yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. Cool. <laughs> but they had a really great episode on grief. Yeah. And I was listening to it after my father passed mm-hmm. because I was like, I've never gone through a loss this large. I need to understand how to process it. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about, you know, your narrative or your self-concept. And there are things that happen in life that force you to rewrite your narrative. Yeah. And if you're able to successfully do that, you tend to persevere and are able to incorporate that into yourself and move mm-hmm. on. And they gave the example of a woman who lost her husband and they'd been married for 50 years. And it was we, 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 us, 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 mm-hmm. us. But the minute she started thinking about I, him, and separating yeah. the two and rewriting the narrative, still acknowledging their life together, but also envisioning her life without him moving forward, that's what allowed her to start to deal with that. That's really profound actually. Right? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why one of my favorite quotes is you are who you choose to be. Yeah. Um, And it's from the Iron Giant. And it's always stuck with me because I felt that sense of determination. Like I wanted to define myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to create spaces where people can define themselves as well and share it with the world without fear of repercussion. And, um, and I think remembering that, hearing that, and like hearing a research study that documented right, how to do right. that, it was like, okay, I am not going to let myself be defined by these few milestone events. They are. I'm going to write my own narrative. Right. Yeah. And they're massive things. Yeah. They're like yeah. life altering things. And that's fine. That's, it mm-hmm. happens. There's mm-hmm. death is the only certainty. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't have to be the end of your journey. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really, really interesting. Thank you. Um, Okay. So we will definitely share the contact information um, (laughs) because you do. You're going to find the love of your life. I can tell this is just the beginning. (laughs) Civic Saint is a baby. It's going to grow. I cannot wait to see where you you take it. Um, I will definitely be going online to choose my own new apparel. I can't wait. Thank you. Yes. CivicSaint.com. Perfect. Perfect. (laughs) Okay. So we're going to, we're going to wrap up with five rapid fire questions. Um, I think I can answer the first one. Favorite quote. Which you kind of just gave me. Yeah, you are who you choose to be. Yes, that's great. Okay, next question. You are trying to get pumped up. You maybe had a bad day. You're trying to turn the day around. What song are you going to jam out to? (laughs) Well, um, 
a lot. So I have, I love Spotify. So the short answer is anything by Cardi B or SZA. Okay. I love. Um, and I just on the way over here heard Cardi B's song Press, which uh-huh. was so good. It's I like, love it. Yeah. I love it. So okay. listen to it. It's fun. <laughs> what What one accomplishment are you most proud of? Oh, golly. I, the short, the easy answer would be Civic Saint, but the real answer would be my year of AmeriCorps Vista. Mm-hmm. I think that experience was pivotal to me, like feeling confident in myself. Yeah. I think it's so important for people to have the opportunity to like get outside of their traditional narrative, mm-hmm. like leave where you've grown up or, you know, work outside of the home or, or be with other people who haven't seen you as a child and think like, yeah. God for you don't like fashion or God for you don't. Well, it's like, no, 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 no. You don't define me. I'm yeah, going to I go. get to choose that. Yeah. yeah. So that was awesome because it showed me I could be successful anywhere I went as mm-hmm. long as I leaned into my heart and trusted in my skills. So AmeriCorps by far is the most profound experience I've had. That's awesome. That's awesome. (laughs) What are two things on your bucket list that you have yet to check off? Ooh, definitely going to Australia and or New Zealand. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. I might not come back. So I should save that (laughs) until later in life. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah. I could get a work visa. Um, (laughs) And I really want to own a motorcycle. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I took a ridership class at JCCC last Uh year and fell in love. Fun. (laughs) That's so fun. Adventurous for sure. Right. All right. Well, last question is, I am most inspired by? Oh, gosh. Michelle Obama. (laughs) Easy answer. Mm. Um, I read her book, Becoming, earlier this year. um, And it was great because I was reading it while my mother was alive. And through Michelle Obama's story, I was able to reflect on the sacrifices my parents had made for me. Yeah. And especially seeing some of the foils of what my mother's journey might have been uh-huh. like through Michelle's mm-hmm. and being able to talk with her mom about yeah, it before wow. she passed away That's cool. and, and actively say thank you for all that you and my father did to build a good life for my brother and me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even as simple as like moving from Kansas City to Olathe. Right. Hey. <laughs> is profound. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Wow. I love her. <laughs> well, I sh- can guarantee she loves you, and she's so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I am, and I'm just meeting you. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as we were saying earlier, um, I feel like Godfrey Riddle should be in Harry Potter. It's such a Harry Potter name. <laughs> thank it's you. so fun. Uh, thank you so much for being on my show. This has been a really entertaining for me, hopefully for everybody listening. <laughs> thank you all for tuning in to Ready, Set, Grow. The Reedy Set Grow Podcast with Trish Reedy.